So we're, we're in this journey together, and I, I should quit now, eh? <laughs> All right, I don't have a watch, and there's no clocks in here. And, uh, so I'll, 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 uh, I'll wrap it up. I'll lie like most preachers do and say, in closing. <laughs> they don't really mean they're closing. They just want to fake you out and, uh, to keep you longer. In anticipation, it's going to be over pretty soon. It's like a doctor's visit. And uh, it's like this old guy, he went to the doctor and, and uh, wasn't very good at hearing. And so he's pulling up his pants and the doctor said, you're right, Mr. Jones. He said, that really was a loud one. He said, but what I said was, I need to listen to your heart. <laughs> so, because we don't always hear things correctly. So to, two more stories and then, and then I'll quit. So uh, the sun sets in the west, people brush their teeth, they go to bed because it's night, the sun rises in the east, they brush their teeth, they go to work because it's day. Are they watching two different suns do two different things so that their lives are impacted in opposite ways? No, they're watching, they're observing the same natural phenomena. They're both observing that one sun do the same thing. So why then are their lives impacted in opposite ways, day and night? It has to do with the angle from which they're viewing the event. From this angle, the sun's going down. From this angle, the sun's coming up. But they're both watching the same thing. And all of us have angles, right? And there are angles that are healthy. There are angles that are unhealthy. There are, all of our angles are informed by something. They're informed by an abusive situation that took place in our lives that said all men are crappy, can never be trusted. We have experiences that say white people. We have experiences that say you can't trust Indians, they never show up on time, they're unreliable. You have experiences that, that tell us all, so our lives are informed and our angles. And out of those angles, then we make decisions that basically shape our behavior and uh, it's like a, a view of the world or worldview. And there are assumptions that, that are born out of our views of the world. So one time, my son Dan Yian, when he was about six, he was staying in a teepee with his mom. We set it up at this powwow. So he's saying to his mom about his friend Johnny. He says, Mom, Johnny, he's a white boy, right? And my wife said, yeah, he's, he's a white boy, but, but Ian, I'm a white woman, because my wife is half Welsh and half Norwegian. And so uh, Ian said, no, no, she's not, or no, you're not. And my wife said, Ian, I I'm a white woman. And Ian said, no, you're not. And my wife said, Ian, look, I have blonde hair. I have uh, fair skin. I have blue eyes. I'm a white woman. And she said, like, this little cloud of realization passed over his face. And then he looked at her and he said, you better stop saying that or I'm going to tell Dad. <laughs> Then in his strongest language, he said, uh, and he's going to spank your butt. <laughs> it's like a powerful language for a six-year-old, right? It's like the most horrible curse word he could come up with. And uh, so if you would have asked Ian the day before, is your mom white or is she native? He would have said she's native. But was his reality based upon fact or perception? It's perception. Ian's perception was his reality, and Ian's reality was his perception. And all of us grow up with perceptions, good, bad, misinformed, well-informed, but that's what basically shapes us. And so for me, and so many that I hang around with in Indian country these days, that, that we want our minds and souls and hearts to be informed by a creator himself. Because we want to love in a way that we don't know how to love. I don't know how to love in a sacrificial way, really. Because I'm basically a selfish guy. And my, my wife could tell you that, that he's a selfish guy. And my boys could tell you how I wounded them. I've had to sit with my boys and cry and uh, let them cry and tell me how I hurt them. And then ask them for their forgiveness and, and let them forgive me when they felt they could and needed to. And today, uh, we are best of friends. 
I have lied many times. I have been unfaithful in my head and in my heart. And, and in all those things, uh, I, I always try to find uh, that place of forgiveness and acceptance in terms of our relationship to the Creator. And for me, that's what Jesus makes possible. Uh, and I, I'm not real thrilled with Christianity. I'm not a big fan. I don't even say I'm a Christian anymore. Uh, I just say I'm a follower of the Jesus way. Because Jesus and the spirit of Jesus would be true for all human beings. We all need to love and be loved. We all need to be accepted and affirmed just like we are. And the church has always said, don't play cards, don't go to movies, don't go to basketball games, don't wear long dresses, don't wear makeup, don't, all of that. And Jesus is just saying, come to me with your goofy music. Even that goofy Christian country western music. He <laughs> said, I can handle two, three songs of that. And uh, not many more than that. Um, but the, the capacity to, to really love. And so we have a powwow that we do out in Oregon, a traditional powwow called the Living Waters Powwow. It's a family camp. So we have lots of stuff for kids just talking about Basically, Lakota values, really, in relationship to biblical values, respecting parents, living in a good way, alcohol-free, drug-free, in terms of dependency kinds of issues. And, um, so I just want to say thank you for coming uh, and listening. I wrote a book a couple years ago. I don't have any more left here. It's called uh, One Church, Many Tribes, Following Jesus the Way God Made You. Now, I used to call it 500 Years of Bad Haircuts which uh, really was made sense to me. But the publisher said, well, they might think it's like a hair manual or something. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's just beauticians would buy it after that. So they changed it to that. But it's basically my story about how to, uh, we've just been wrestling through, so many of us, uh, how to, to follow the Jesus way and not feel that, that Jesus is asking us to be anything less than the creator created us to be. And that's a journey that's happening all over the world uh, today, not just in the United States, but it's very controversial right now. It's like in, you know, quoting Shakespeare, you know, to drum or not to drum? That is the question. <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's just as heavy, you know, he's like saying to die or not to die. Well, you know, if you drum in a lot of churches today, it's like to drum or not to drum. And uh, yet the journey begins and, or continues.